Thanks for the intro. Um, hi all. Um, in this session, I'm going to talk about the QGIS Tempo Controller and how you can use it uh, to visualize and uh, access WMST um, layers. So um, just a brief background. Um, this, this work was done uh, under the fund from the government of Canada under the contract uh, of Map Gears. And my name, as I've been introduced, uh, is Samuel Mokisambwe. I'm a senior software developer from Katoza, um, which is a South African company that deals with uh, providing services um, in uh, free and open source softwares. That, is, that includes training, um, software development, and uh, we also do maintenance for the existing GIS systems. I'm also a QGIS core and PyQGIS developer. Uh, that means I contribute to the core features of QGIS, and I also write plugins to um, add some new functionality in QGIS. Um, I'm going to cover the following topics. I'm going to briefly introduce um, the WMST specification for those who are not, do not have an idea of what WMST specification is. I'm going to talk about the Tempo Controller and uh, the QGIS Tempo Controller modes. Then we're going to look at the, how you could uh, add and access WMST layers inside QGIS. And then I'm going to show uh, briefly uh, the animations that uh, you could make using the WMST layers. And uh, I'm going to touch a bit about the Temporal Controller API. Then uh, I'm going to finish the presentation. So just briefly about QGIS. For, I'm sure a lot of you already know what QGIS is. But uh, for those who don't know what QGIS is, it's the GIS software. Um, that allows you to create, edit, and analyze your special data. You could also create maps and uh, visualize map inside QGIS. Um, QGIS supports a range of data formats. You can use it to uh, access vector, raster, a mesh, NetCDF. And recently, QGIS support uh, has a core support for temporal data which includes the WMST layers. So the WMST specification is an OGC standard that was designed to help um, serving WMS layer, layers that have time support. Um, from the slide there, you could see it's the, one of the WMS layers served from a Canada meteorological service. And um, that's from the QGIS application. So for those who don't know how to add a WMST service, so in QGIS, you have uh, this browser panel. You could go and uh, use the WMS or WMST provider. So you can see the, the, uh, on the left there, that's the UI for the for the browser panel. And then after you click new connection there, you could use the, uh, the dialog that is on the, on the light. You could use it to add the name and the URL. And then when you click OK, a new service will be um, available for you in the, in the QGIS. Um, so the QGIS Tempo Controller, so um, I'd like to explain it as a framework that um, um, allows handling of the temporal data inside QGIS in the most uh, efficient way. Um, this work, as I mentioned before, was funded by the government of Canada um, through the MapGear contract. And um, it was developed by Katoza together with Northrod. Before QGIS, there was a plugin called Time Manager, which was a very good plugin. I think it had um, 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 1,000, uh, 10,000. It was developed, uh, 10,000 downloads. It was developed by Anita Gracer. 
um, it had a certain limitations which um, the QGS Tempo Controller handled and um, they were resolved in the Tempo Controller which resulted into the plugin developer to retry the plugin and uh, provide more support for the Tempo Controller. So the development of the Tempo Controller was, so the main part of the Tempo Controller was um, finished on around May 2020, and the, and the first QGIS version that had Tempo Controller was QGIS 3.14. I'm going to talk about the Tempo Controller modes. So by default, the Tempo Controller has a disabled mode, navigation disabled mode. So when you now download QGIS, the te Tempo Controller is disabled by default. And um, when you access the Tempo Controller using the icon, you can see that there's a clock icon on the, on the toolbar it will pop up in the following mode. That means the Tempo controller navigation is disabled, and this was designed so as, you know, um, we don't want to enable the Tempo controller by default because it might, get, it might make user uh, confused the first time. Um, and the, there's also a fixed temporal range uh, mode, which you can use to filter and show only the layers that fit in in that, uh, in that range. So let's say you have layers that range from the 23rd to the 24th, um, and you want to fit out only those. So this is the mode that you want to go with. And the last mode is animation mode, which is used specifically for creating visualiz animation visualization. Um, uh, so you could um, have a list of layer, different layers. And when you are doing this is that uh, when you're stepping through each frame, as you can see there, uh, the QGIS tempo, tempo controller broadcast a, a temporal range that we, you can use, I mean a provider of a certain that I can use to change the data. So any layer that will, um, will match the broadcasted um, temporal range, it will be shown in the QGIS uh, map canvas. And any layer that doesn't match that uh, specific um, temporal range will not be shown. Yeah, so I'm uh, on the WMST layer now. Um, we have seen that we have certain modes with the temporal controller. Um, but we want to see the influence it has and the effects that it has inside the, uh, with the WMST layers. So for those who are not familiar with the WMST layers, um, this is how you could add them. So you need a service um, that uh, you could add there. You could just light kick and uh, add the service as I just shown on the, uh, on the one of the slides back and then you could navigate through the, um, the service and you could select the layer. So the example that you're seeing there is the line for um, data that is being uh, broadcasted each month from the, from the, from the digital F service. There's also another way to add the WMST layer through the data source manager which you also connect your, your service provider and then you load the, the specific layer that you want. After you add the layer, um, you will see that there's a clock icon um, on the layer item on the light side here that will tell you that the layer that you have added has temporal capabilities and uh, it's possible for you to use it, uh, to use temporal controller on it. And um, so not only the WMST layer can, or will have that icon, any layer that has temporal capabilities, a vector layer, a luster layer, um, net CDF or mesh. So if you just happen to add the layer and then 
you see there's an icon that, that um, the clock icon there, that means it has temporal capabilities. So this is, the, is one of the features that the temporal controller has added inside QGIS to out, automatically detect each layer that has temporal capabilities. So for the WMST layer, there's a um, specific section that you could use to uh, manipulate and get data from the um, from the WMS service. So what you are looking now is the layer properties which you could um, get from the uh, from the added layer that you have um, have shown you. you uh, we have tried to add in the in the in the past slide. When you go to the temporal tab, you will see that there is dynamic control here. So this is a, um, is an option that you check if you want. Um, the temporal controller to have control on the specific layer. If you don't want the temporal controller to have control on that specific layer, you can just disable this. And uh, so for the WMST layers, um, so for those who are familiar with WMST, it, there's some instance you just want to update a single layer and not necessarily broadcast the whole, um, what should I say, change the whole uh, temporal range on the temporal controller. Maybe I just want to deal with the specific layer. So you can just disable this dynamic temporal control and then use the settings that you have been provided there. Um, and you can see that there's even a label that will um, alert you. In order to use these settings, you need to uh, disable the dynamic temporal controller. Um, one of the settings is the time slice mode. So um, one of the, of the options that you could go with is use the match, match to, um, to start range, which you use when you, um, so when you click, when you click here to disable the dynamic control, you will have start and uh, end dates that you could use to input. And then uh, after you input uh, those uh, dates, you want to specify whether when you query that layer, you want all it only to use the, the start date. Um, another, uh, there are different slice modes. Um, you could choose to um, include both of the, of, the, of the dates. You could choose to include only one of the, the end of the date. But there's also a setting for ignoring the time components. Maybe you just want to query the layer using dates and not necessarily using the um, the wall uh, the wall um, the wall date and time. There's also an option number three for reference time. So um, in some of the WMST layers, they support reference time. So for example, this uh, forecast data where there's a date that the forecast is being done, and then the, the date for the um, for the forecast is still to happen. So um, for the server that support those kind of layers, that's the statement that you want to use. Um, this is one of the examples that a WMST layer um, using the temporal controller and uh, um, the, uh, the temporal controller mo is in the animation mode. Um, this data is from the Canada Meteorological Service. As you can see, that is looping through um, different times of the, of the days, and it is showing the air temperature on Earth. And this is another example, using, still using the uh, Canada Meteorological Service um, um, layers. So this is the for wind waves. Um, you could still see that um, it is going through a, a different um, set of dates. So to achieve this, first of all, you need to make sure that the temporal controller animation mode has been enabled. And then uh, you make sure that the animation range match the animation, um, the, the, the range that the layer has broadcast that it has data with. 
After that, then you can just use the play button. Thanks. The play button to um, to go through and query different different um, WMST layers. Um, originally, we uh, planned to show an example of um, a simple a plugin that we wanted you to show how you could uh, for for those for plugin developers how we could tap into the Templo control API and uh, use um, some of the um, features that it has exposed. But due to the limitations of the presentation, we are, we are un unable to do that. But um, there is a Templo control API that's um, available on the QGIS documentation. So if there's anyone who is interested in doing or getting to know how they could use it, they can just reach out to us. Yeah, um, so all of this work is available under the QGIS um, main source code. And uh, if you use any of these features that I have just uh, shown you here, you could just um, open, if you have any issue while, while using one of the features that we have just shown here, you could just open the, um, the issue inside the, that link, which is the QGIS issue page. Yeah, these are the resources that are available. You could, um, the QGIS, I think most of you are familiar with, and um, the WST specification. And uh, for the Meteorological Service of Canada, because uh, I've shown a lot of the data from them, they have a lot of uh, WMST data that you could play around with. And uh, um, just to summarize this, um, the Temporal Controller um, has enabled QGIS um, uh, to handle temporal data in the most efficient way. Um, because uh, without it, we would have um, um, a lot of plugins, each of the plugins with a specific scenario trying to handle a certain data provider. But right now, we have a Temporal Controller which all logic that will be added to for any data format provider will adhere to the API and to the, the structure that the Temporal Controller has set in. And also the Temporal Controller has enabled QGIS to be um, users to um, use um, QGIS to also you know, do visualization of, uh, of different, if not all, um, Temporal, temporal formats, I mean data with temporal, temporal uh, capabilities.